the day. Yeah. Oh, it's around this time. <laughs> yeah. Take it away, brother. Welcome to Aging with 8-Bit, the podcast where we talk growing up with games and how they've evolved over the years. We're your host, Tyler and Colin. And honestly, it feels good to be sitting back at this table again. It's felt <laughs> like ages. Yeah. I, I know it's only been two weeks, but yeah. it has felt like a long time because this is the only thing that sadly gets me through work yeah. during the week, <laughs> I got to say. It's... um. You know, like when we do our podcast, it's uh, it's one of those things that reminds me that it's like you'll get through the week kind of thing, and then we I get to talk about the things that are enjoyable, and, and there's things that I like about my job, but talking about video games and all the things that they do, you know, 100%. I'll take that over anything. Yeah, speaking of things that I enjoy, can I rant about something that <laughs> I do not enjoy? Because there has Absolutely. been an event for the past two weeks that has been driving me crazy, uh-huh. and this is a... This is a message to all video game developers or <laughs> just entertainment companies in general. Do not spam my email with your games, which I have oh, never played yep. or subscribed to. So I have been getting emails daily, multiple times a day from Niantic, mm-hmm. the Monster Hunter team. They yep. have this new mobile game, or at least that's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. It's like it looks like a new mobile game. And they have been blowing up my email, but I have never subscribed to any of their games, <laughs> any of their platforms, any of their partner companies, their parent companies, ever. Yeah. So they either they either stole my email from Facebook or they <laughs> bought it from China. Yeah. That's the only way. Yeah. And it, there is not a faster way for me to hate your product than yeah. for you to spam my email try it, or try something it, try I have it, never. It, yeah. yeah. I have never once bought or paid for. I'm Niantic. If you're listening, I'm never buying your game any ever again. I don't care if it's the best. You guys ruined this for me. So if you release another Monster Hunter, and I want to sit here and tell him all it's the great banned <laughs> it's, from this, it's, con- this it's, table. <laughs> this table can I won't bring it up. And I'm gonna be honest. I was kind of lost, and like I was like, man, what? Because we again we talked throughout the week about different things and ideas and whatever. And I remember us touching on that you know, that problem that you had, but I hadn't like really remembered everything about it. Um, But that sucks. Like, I hate that because it's annoying. Well, it's, and I give like the whole thing. It's like this whole like mobile space is super competitive. I get that. And so with that like competitiveness, they're trying to like force feed people to play the game because then it's the hope that uh, it, maybe it's not you, right? Like, obviously, they have your email somehow, right? We've g- gone through the list. But I think the the part of that is, is like, or even, like, when you listen to Spotify for free, right? And it plays and plays and plays, and then it plays those commercials. And if you listen long enough, like me and you, if we're doing projects and stuff, I don't know about you, but I play, like, music in the background. Those same, they play the same commercials over and over again. You know what? Eventually, over time, they're playing the long game. Eventually, I'm going to go check up, uh, you know, all states' insurance prices because I've heard it for the last four hours. So I think with that, they're trying to fill your email to be like, you know what? Unlike you, other people are going to be like, you know what? I'm going to give this game a try. And it, they, you may not like it, but your friend may like it or whatever. And so then it just becomes this big cash grab. And so. I mean, I, I would be cool with it if I had subscribed to their email before oh, no, oh, yeah. anything, like any of their games or whatever. But I never have, so oh, I, I was like, I don't know where y'all got this information yeah, I've, from. Yeah, I've been the only Monster Hunter, like, fan in the group, so I know. Yeah, so they must have been spying in your <laughs> PC, and they're like, oh, here. You, you, you got, logged, you you logged on to my internet, and so that's how they, they wormhole oh, through dude, there. Oh, dude, that's what it is. See, they're getting us, they're trying to get us, the government, have you coming ever, after Have us. you ever seen the Snowden movie? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah it's like, he's, he's all in this, like, freak out moment. Now, I'm not going to, you know sabotage our government and and you know try to go to a different country but he already was proving that we know that they're listening and then when you if you've signed into facebook in the last year and accepted their user rights it says um user generated ads right or um, something participation ads and so it's it's what you search it's what they hear it's all that like for sure 100 percent I'd be worried if I were you. I'm just saying. <laughs> because you're running an underground <laughs> card business. Yeah, back market. 
sketch underground. I'm pretty actually. I'm pretty legal. I got my tax forms this week. Oh, did you from eBay? Okay, so <laughs> I'm paying my taxes. But it looks like it's going good. Oh, the business um, of reselling cars. You know, and even just you know, I know you know one of the things we want to talk about is just like our love of like growing up with um, or like just talking about trading cards. But the business itself is amazing. Like I've been teaching myself finance. I guess in a way of like, you know, supply and demand, but also it's like running, you know, price rates and so on. And so it's like a car can be at a certain value, you know, in the market overall, but because of my like shipping standards and how I handle my business and how I communicate with my customers and so on, you can fluctuate your price to help your margins and stuff. And so it's like, all these things I would never think that I would be talking about and or running a card business out of my house <laughs> ever. But um, it's been amazing. But it's also, it's like, it's enriching to me in the, like, I guess, card community and, like, playing-wise, you know, because um, this is my mini rant. And I'm going to look in the camera. Any of you that are buying the Lorcana cards, because I'm going to be honest, I just want to play the game because I'm a trading card game player. There's a special place for you that I'm not going to talk about, but it isn't good. You guys causing Target to have to sell their booster packs for $20 a piece, you're the reason why we can't have good trading card games. And thank you. Like, in rant. Is this, is this the new Disney one? Is yes. that the one you're talking about? And so it's like, so it's the Disney one, but it's these new, like, you basically, you can have, like, an aggro stitch deck. Like, I'm... Like it, Stitch the stitch Disney the, character, Stitch okay. the Alien, Stitch Agro deck, you know it's stuff like that. Or like you basically like you have like an inkwell in the top right of your cards. So instead of lands, you have characters, and you sur- you sacrifice the characters for a turn, or you tap them for a turn. Damn Disney, to, <laughs> yeah, to add to add ink to your inkwell, right? And then you use the ink that you have to summon new characters or draw new characters, if you will. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So you're the characters turn into ink. There you go. Okay, I was about to say Disney <laughs> is coming brutal on the card game. That's like that's no, all magic level. The, but the um, the company that they have, and you know, I'm sorry that I don't 100. percent And the reason why I haven't given it a lot of love is because I haven't been able to find it, so I haven't been able to like get in and like really research it. But the from what I've heard, the group that they had used um, to help build this card game for them was a like a newer group but it's like it's been going really well for them like they're about to release their second set um which is going to be you know a cash grab to try to get that too you know and i mean their second set when did they release the first set probably three months ago jesus (laughs) because what i think that is is going to be like a series and in that series they're going to have like one two three and that block and then the next block will be a new set. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's my problem with Magic right now. They right. put out so many sets within a year yep. that I can't keep up and or have the money to keep up. <laughs> well, it's like, um, no, like, you're not wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. It's just, it's, they, they pump out so much, I would say, content, but yeah. products that it's, it's hard it's hard to have the energy in my spare time to research and look up these cards and want to actually go out and buy these cards and build a deck with them. Cause I'm like in two months, they're just going to put out another set. And I, well, and I think this be better or they're going to reprint something that I used to have. And now it's worth nothing or the price goes up somehow. It's, <laughs> it's weird. Well, and that's, I mean, we were talking about that a minute or like a little bit ago, but um, I think one of the sets that caused, like, everybody to kind of, like, slow down and be like, hey, how do we get our hands on Magic cards was Lord of the Rings. Like, that was the biggest booster set as of recent that I can think of because here's what's crazy is that the Lord of the Rings set came out, right? Then Commander Masters, like, a month later. A month after that, well, and I could be wrong with my timeline, but these are all within a sp- – it doesn't really matter because it's in a span of five months we've had – Commander Masters, which is $23 a booster pack. Um, you have Lord of the Rings. If you find the bundle, buy all eight of them. You know what I mean? And then literally this month, or end of September, beginning of October, 
you had Doctor Who, the set, which is like a specialty set that came out. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it just came out. Just It just dropped, like, the Commander bundles just dropped, I think, three or four nights ago. But see, it, Go ahead. Uh, see, that just forces me to not care, you know. I, get, I, get I, I don't want to keep up with as just a as just a as a consumer and just having fun in my spare time because I've played Magic for you years in, and years. You introduced me to Magic, yeah. Magic. And but when you're pumping out so much products within yeah. especially a five month span, I just I I don't care. And I, I feel like if you s- space it out, I'm sure everybody is going to disagree with this, but if you space it out, it just makes the sets. And the art that comes in these boxes just special. Yeah. Has a little bit more magic to it. <laughs> but like real magic, not magic the gathering. Like yeah. magic in your soul. <laughs> uh, I just feel like it'll have more magic. Like it's yeah. just more, a little more, makes you feel better about your purchase because you know in three months it's not just going to get replaced by something else. Right. Does that make sense? Because I remember buying old. Uh, not like alpha or beta sets, but just uh, some older sets from the later 90s and the early 2000s. They felt special because, you know, they weren't going to get reprinted. And the artwork was just, ama- or to yeah. me, it was amazing. It just had this this feel to it that can't really be replicated in the newer, how they print stuff now. I mean, yeah. I know they could just hire those artists back, be like, hey, just, you know. Dude, copy what you did yeah, here. Yeah, put your own thing on this one. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. There's just, it has a feel, that vintage feel to it. Even though back then it wasn't vintage, it just felt that way. And I just, I don't feel any of that, especially with the Lord of the Rings set. I was looking at all the uh, uh, artwork for it. I mean, the lands were cool, the, 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 land, the like, special lands. Yeah, like where I've, I've collected the whole map, which is all the lands put together. Yeah. And they just use different parts of the Lord of the Rings map. Which that was cool. Like I'm as a collector, right, and just a lover of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I liked to put that all together. But I had some. I had really hard times. Like I agree with you. No, don't get me wrong. And I know you guys may hear like, oh, he's running a card business, so on and so forth. But like, there's cards I like. I'm like, man, like I really like this card. I'm gonna try to hunt, you know, to get a copy of this, or I'm gonna sell this one because I have a copy of it, right? And I'm a. I want to play the game. And me, better than anybody, I've had three or four bundle packs that I've kind of gone through and boosters and so on. I had a really hard time finding cards where I was like, this is dope. There yeah. wasn't a single Gandalf card that I was like, I'm going to somehow figure out that this is going to, or like a Gimli card. There wasn't a Gimli card that was amazing. Yeah. Um, which, you know, but I think it's like, I, I think what it goes back to is like, we've, and I may, I picked up this term and use it my own way, but like how, like when you're building the flavor of your deck and like you love like how this is going, right? There's cards that I've seen in the Doctor Who set that have a lot of the same like instances or whatever of older cards, but it's a Doctor Who character. And so now this kid can be like, oh, I'm going to take this card because it's Doctor Who, I love it, and mix it in with all the other cards that I have in my deck. Yeah. And, and, it, it's like, it's hard to explain, but it's like you have like like a pair of Levi jeans, right? If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. If you wear them like brand new and you wear them for a year, after a year they're like your jeans. People are like, oh, like you've, I, I guess you've like experienced life in them, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so it's like, I think it's, I think it's that it is what they're trying to do is like they're trying to like make like, make it your magic, magic experience. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. And I mean, from my earlier comments, I'm not trying to take anything away from the artist. Yeah. It just, to me, it just feels, a lot of it just feels generic nowadays. Like, I don't know. Like, nothing about it feels authentic. Like, I know it's Lord of the Rings or Phyrexia, yeah. and it has a feel, but to me, it's just like, it's just a generic card. Like, I don't feel anything deeper down than I did with the older Yeah, where you're sets. like, I have to get booster packs. This looks so cool. Yeah. yeah. Is another... I want to know: Does it has it felt like a second job yet? Selling, reselling these cards? No, no, no. It's it's now. There's some times where you know, respectfully, if you guys ever use my shop and so on, there's been some people that have like asked for refunds or like they'll wait till they get the card, and it's been like three or four, right? Where they'll get the card and they're like, "Oh, this wasn't as described 
on eBay. And per the eBay rules, right, if it's that, then they get their refund. Um, and we've talked about it. I had a person that he wanted, you know, they won a $35 card, right? Um, and eBay, however, worked out. I only had to pay him back 20 bucks. And, you know, in me, like, I was like, at first I was like, hey, I want the card returned. <clears throat> and then they were like, well, they didn't say anything for a couple hours. And then I, like, sat back and I was, and I'm a big person of this. I'm like, karma, the karma wheel spins constantly, you know? And I said, you know what, in, in act of good business, and plus I had, like, four or five cards that were going to cover that cost of that card, you know, going away. I was like, you know what, just keep the card, you know? It's it's going to be what it's going to be. That part of it makes it feel like a job where you're just, like, you kind of have to give up things that you don't like that you have to give up. Yeah. But at the same time, there's, like, the price. And, and this goes back to the finance of it, right? To pull that card wasn't really hard. It was one booster box. That booster box on um, Amazon right now is $28. Mm-hmm. So I could buy two of those and have and run a really good chance of either pulling two or just pulling one having and being able to like cover that loss again and not be that down, you know? So it's just like that risk reward kind of thing. I personally love it though. Yeah. There now there's some things and like just trying to find like balance in life and you know, and not coming home and you know, if if you can you can see past that, but there's a stack of like twenty cards over there. <laughs> and so stuff like that. That was going to be my next question, or I was going to rephrase the question as, has it consumed your life yet? No. <laughs> Do you only think about, like, uh, reselling cards when you're not at home selling there's, cards? There's, um, there's times, like, we'll be out, like, for example, we went to Costco yesterday, and Costco has its Christmas pack where it's two Pokeballs and a booster box um, that's, like, 50 bucks for that whole thing. When individually, if I bought that, like both of those puggy balls are fourteen dollars a piece, and then the booster box fifty four, so I'm like doing the math, and I'm like, because I've seen like YouTube videos where guys will go to Costco, and, and the guys like, yeah, I want the whole pallet. They're like, what do you mean? He's like, no, we're gonna load all these in my truck. I want them all, because oh my god, it's because um, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was last year the whole pallet the last year this guy um, it was the. The Pokeball, again, the Pokeballs are fourteen ninety nine, right? Because it comes with a collector coin, and the Pokeball itself is a collector piece, right? I'm sorry, is this is this just Pokemon cards? Like, yeah. it's a whole pallet of Pokemon cards. Yeah, so this, it was literally, so it was a box of three Pokeballs. It was, was the item, was three Pokeballs, and in those Pokeballs, there are three booster packs, and they were random booster packs. So it was, like, one from each of the most recent sets, right? And each box had three of those Pokeballs. And it was like 20 bucks. So he just walks in. And he did like a vlog series, right? So he walks into Costco, finds a person. He goes, uh, yeah, I want to buy this whole pallet. I mean, and it's like if you've ever been to Costco, <laughs> like. Oh, yeah. You've seen the, my bad, talking with my hands here. Um, you've seen the like pallet where it's, you know, up to the sign. Yeah. And he. And then puts it in the bed of his truck and drives off. And then his next video was him ripping everything and like. Did it did it equal out to what he spent? Which is wild to me. <laughs> if you didn't get any Pokemon cards that year for Christmas kids, now you know why. Yeah, yeah that was last year. In the Calif- I'm torn. in See, the Santa Monica area. So I mean, I'm sure he's like he resells cards and he does it for content, which I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, you know, rag on anyone right. trying to make a living. But at the same time, and it's just one store in the United States. It's it's not a huge impact, but also, yeah. like, leave some for some other people. Yeah, that's – and we've had this conversation many times. Like, yes, I'm a collector. Yes, I'm a seller of cards. But it's like I leave, you know, I leave some for the next guy. Um, so – or if the store, like, I'll – Target's, like, one of my favorite hits. Like, right after work, I can drive in, go to Target, and then, you know, go. If Target's been ravaged and then all that, all that is left is – you know, two booster boxes or whatever, I'm going to buy those. Or those elite trainer boxes, I'm going to buy them. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I get it. You know what I mean? But if it's like, if I see a kid, and this is the honest truth, right? If I see a younger kid that's like obviously getting into the hobby or he's like, man, I just, you know, just want to collect cards. I'm not going to be that guy and see like 10, um, 10 packs like that. Are, you know, those free floating packs that they have that you can buy? Yeah. The individuals. 
I'm not going to go up and just be like, good luck. You know, like, I'll just grab in, in my head. And maybe, the, again, this is me talking about the karma wheel and, and see how it spins and whatever, right? But I'll grab, like, four or five packs or even less, like two, and I'll just walk off and be like, you know, let the let the fate of the cards, like we've talked about, the, or the luck of the draw. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be kind of thing. Yeah. Because in that, now, if I'm making six figures, I'm not even going to be going to, the, or I'm, if I'm making six figures, if I'm trying to make it a personal business and quit my job and live like that, I'm not going to be buying from Target anyways. I'm going to go direct, direct seller or try to figure, you know, that out. Yeah. Spam. <laughs> Wizards of the Coast with some emails. Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, well, I got caught in a situation the other day. Uh, and I was torn on either to do the right thing or lie. <laughs> I love this. And I and I definitely picked the devil option. I lied. <laughs> like I did okay. not handle myself correctly. Gotcha. Uh, but I was I was at Target and I was in the card section. I was looking at um, uh, magic cards. I was just seeing what the newer sets were. And also I because uh, I sent you a picture that day of the Digimon trading yeah. cards. And I didn't know those existed, and I was like, I'm going to buy some just because I right. love Digimon. And this uh, older woman, this mom, came up to me, uh, and she was looking for baseball cards for her son. I have never once in my life ever collected a baseball card, a football <laughs> card, like no sports, nothing. It's always been the nerd. I know where this is going. Pokemon, yeah. uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Right. I, don't, I don't know. Even... In the sports world, like, I follow football a little bit. But other than that, I couldn't tell you a damn thing about <laughs> what's going on in the, yeah. in the sports world. Uh, and she she goes, I, I my son loves collecting. He's a big baseball card collector. Uh, what is the best brand to buy him for his birthday? This is going to be his big birthday gift. Oh, my God. It's going to be the main thing. I'm going to get him tons of these these packs oh so he can open them as soon as he wakes up. You know, I think he was like 12 years old or something. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Old enough to know what he's getting. <laughs> Not young enough to just play, oh, cool, it's a card. Yeah. Old enough to like, this is crap. Why did you buy this, yeah. mom? Uh, and she goes, do you know a lot about baseball cards? And to look like... A semblance of a man <laughs> that I have, you know, that I'm not there for all of the the child section of the card. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm gonna work really hard to get through. <laughs> I'm just imagining this kid. Go ahead, go I'm sitting there holding magic cards. I kind of put it by my waist and I turned to her. I have been collecting baseball cards for years. What do you want to know? <laughs> Right, I was torn. Like I should, I could have just told the truth and be like, I have no clue. <laughs> but I lied to make it look like I knew what I was talking about. And uh, uh, do I feel bad? No. But she goes, <laughs> and there was at Target. They have a lot of brands of baseball <laughs> cards. And she goes, okay, well, what's the best brand brand to buy? Yeah. And I was sitting there looking with their with the same confused look. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I don't know. You pick one, and I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was just like, I know the tops are just have been oh, what, what around box? forever. Is there a tops chrome? Maybe. I don't know. Well, I, <laughs> I just said. That's what I'm saying. I, like, look at the draw. You may have lied, but you're really trying to help this lady. Tops chrome, the boxes from Target. I don't know. They're like, well, even if it's tops, like you're safe. It's more than likely it was tops chrome. The only reason why I'm like getting on this, there's a $44 box, shout out, at Target. If you buy it, it's 2023, right? It resells for like 150 bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I mean, you. <laughs> I don't know. I just know that tops used to sell bubble gum in their card packs, yep. and that's what I went with. I was like, ah, tops has been around forever. And yep. I was like, oh, you could get a good. Uh, I, I think I said uh, who do, Josh Hamilton, which he hasn't played in the, <laughs> the league for I don't know how long. <laughs> years, like five years at least. I would have loved to have been in that, like, been in that situation to hear that. Yeah, like, so I just, I don't know. I just started going off. Like, I almost said Mark McGuire because I don't know why. <laughs> That's, like, the first thing that came to my head is, like, a baseball player. And, like, 
Ryan, like, like Nolan Ryan. I'm, yeah. Yeah. He's like, he makes beef now. He doesn't even make, he's not even associated with baseball. That's, that's hilarious. Yeah. So we just, I had this, I want to say 15 minute conversation about the different brands. Oh my. With this mom. Did she like buy some and walk off? She bought a crap load. She bought, I want to say at least $150 worth of these cards. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh. I hope there's something good in there, kid. He may be sitting there, and he unwrapped a banger. Because I'm saying this—this this was her like this is all-out gift for your birthday. Like we got you, you know. This is this is your iPad. We're, we're taking you to Texas Roadhouse tonight, and then boom, we're hitting you with the the multiple pack. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> oh, and I know, but I know like there's certain, but there's you know, and and other thing like with like trading cards like Magic. There's there's certain packs you want, certain packs you don't, and I'm not talking about like the set. I'm talking about like set booster versus collector's booster versus draft booster. Yeah, you just you get better stuff in other, yeah, you know, uh, packs. So I have no clue what that kid got. He probably got a whole bunch of just you know what's ironic garbage. is so like in learning how like the community sometimes in Magic can be like we're not going to let you in unless you figure it out kind of thing. Or like you have somebody like you and it could be way just the shop that I went to. And I'm not going to shout out the shop because that's on them. These people don't represent them, but right. And I was just getting into like card buying and trying to figure stuff out and like build stuff. Right. And this is when you were like, Hey, you should build this commander, play this deck, so on and so forth. Right. <clears throat> and I went to this car, that card shop, and I said, hey, it wasn't somebody behind the counter. It was a guy, like, we were both looking at packs, whatever. And I said, hey, you know, should I get, like, a set booster or a draft booster of set XYZ, whatever, right? And, oh, he was like, oh, you should definitely get the draft boosters. And I'm like, now that I look back, I'm like, I told him, like, you know, oh, I'm looking for this card, like, specialty card or whatever. Yeah. And it was, it almost felt like a bait and switch kind of thing. Like, cause there was only a few of the set boosters and I'm like, oh, okay, I see now what you were doing. What <laughs> I found the best, the best people to talk to, at least in magic, I don't know about Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. but in magic, the best, if you want to learn the game, the best people to talk to are the legacy players. Yep. The people that walk around with the locked Pelican case with mm -hmm. multiple libraries that are worth $5,000 a piece because they have spent all this time and money on magic. They they progress past the level of I, what have I done? Yeah, you know, to my bank account that they are just I don't know. They're like the nicest people for some reason, and they're always willing to help and learn and like take their time. Granted, all of their libraries are in double plastic packed PCA ten covers. And you got to sit there and play with them like that. But uh, they're like, they're, uh, for me, I've noticed that they are the most willing to help. That I, Really? Yeah. And see, and maybe that's like what I've noticed. Like, and, you know, just to kind of give y'all a, like a precursor to kind of figure out. So Tyler and I are going to try to put some decks together and we're going to do some, uh, we're going to try to find a card shop that'll let us record and we're going to do some Friday night magic and just kind of get out in the community and just introduce ourselves and but also it's like refresh ourselves on the game that we love to play which Tyler showed me to play it and you know I haven't put it down since I play a lot of arena now um my username is synodix c n o a oh no c n o t e x z <laughs> so if any of you want to play let me know Tyler will probably link it at the bottom yeah it won't be clickable but it will have the link there you um go. Basically, what he's saying is, if you want an easy win, just come play us in a two-headed giant game. There you go. That's uh, that's the form that crush we, us. yeah that we want to um, go and introduce. Just because obviously we do this podcast together, but just kind of um, commentary between us and then other people, and then just kind of figuring it out. Um, but I mean, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent. I just was thinking about that and just kind of where we're going, where we're taking this podcast, but. I did want to talk to you about something. I know we've been talking about cards a lot. Yeah, I was um, I was about to change it up. No, but, but um, one of the things I was going to talk about is how are you liking your? I know you're working on it um, as far as like a review, but I literally was just playing our emulator that mm -hmm. I got us um, this morning, 
and I was playing Mega Man Zero, like one, two, and three, and like switching between the three. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna tell you like my honest opinion, right? Because I was playing Donkey Kong last night, or I mean, a couple nights ago. Once I got off work, one of the best devices that I've bought for myself as a gamer to be able to like have like a balance between life and playing it. I really enjoy it. Ah, you're so annoying. I was literally about to ask, <laughs> uh, like that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Uh, was lately cause balancing with your card selling and yeah. work, especially work, have you been able to play any games recently? It's been a mixture between Minecraft and the emulator. Emulator and then a little bit of arena picked up arena again. But the emulator has been like the reason why I'm like giving it a ten out of ten is because it is drop drop and go, so on and so forth. And I need to add new games. And I know there's there's probably a, a part of the community that's gonna be like, Oh, he plays an emulator, how dare him not play the original or whatever. I'm like, Okay, hey, it's twenty twenty three. Um, I want to have 7,000 games <laughs> access to that I can kind of just skip around. And different, if you haven't used this, guys, like, we're not endorsed by these people at all. I literally bought it off Amazon, and it is the most amazing piece of technology that I've seen. It's a beautiful screen, right? And I can literally hop from system to system and get different experiences that I want to play. Um, because I don't know if you, like, I always have this, like, Donkey Kong itch that I can't scratch, <laughs> and now I can <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the time. It's because, like, I would get to these, these parts in the levels where you just have to shut it down and not be able to play it. And so <laughs> I was going to say that that's what I've been playing the most out of. The emulator. And it has been amazing. See, I'm torn on it because I, I feel with the, uh, the purest, like, yeah. in the heart. Like, I feel it because there's nothing. Nothing beats having the old Game Boy and yeah. just popping in that uh, that old cartridge. Yeah, just giving it a smack on the back. And no, and I'm I'm sure. But and I'm kind of gonna go off on a tangent here. So there's we're starting a new series on this channel where we go to local game shops in the DFW area and promote their store for free. Uh, we're Finishing up one of the the first video from FX Games and Console Repairs in Plano, Texas. So that'll be out probably the same time this video is going to come out. And, you know, it's to help build the local community and whatnot. But what I've noticed there in the prices, they they know their prices. They know what the market price is. They know what they can sell it for. And, like, if you go on eBay, it's the same prices. If you go on Amazon, it's the same prices. It's no surprise there. You might get a couple of good deals here and there between, like, shops, but these guys are professionals, and they know what their stuff is worth. And what I've noticed is uh, that if you want a Game Boy, yeah. you're going to pay for it. It's yeah. a, about $100 now average between everything. You're going to you're gonna play or pay original market value. Yeah, and then, the, then you have to buy the game. Or games, and they're depending on what you get. You're looking at thirty, forty, fifty dollars, even if it's fifteen dollars for a weird fringe game that no one really played or cared about, or if it's just bad. You know, it's still that's one game. Then you've spent a hundred and twenty-five plus dollars to start playing, plus the batteries. Yeah, and with with the emulator, you don't have to worry about that. You. Is it legal? That's a gray area. I looked yeah. it up. It's weird. Um, at at heart, like, is it is it is it okay for yourself to be doing it? Well, yes and no because you want to respect your own time and your wallet by yeah. getting what you pay for. And when you're spending seventy to eighty bucks for this emulator, and you have too many options yeah. to pick from. You definitely feel like you're getting your money's worth, but at the purest <laughs> at the heart, cost, yeah. it also is like, oh, I feel like a piece of crap <laughs> buying this thing. But it's so con- it's so convenient because if you want a new game, you just you take out the SD card. I have it right here, actually. Yeah, I brought it. If you want a new game, you just pop out the SD card, go find a downloadable ROM for it. Yep. That's it. You t- yeah. <laughs> you would check the SD card and put it back in. And yeah, like you were saying the screen, it's it looks amazing. Like it's literally uh 
Have you played a lot of like the PlayStation games? Have you played Final Fantasy on it? I've been playing. I played a little bit of Final Fantasy uh, Five on here, but what I've mostly been playing because it looks so good is Metroid Fusion. Yeah, it looks incredible, like better than I remember the game looking from when I was a kid. And so, and <clears throat> that was going to be my whole point is that like this little device is running a PlayStation that was obviously plugged into our TV or so so on. Yeah, and it is one of the most amazing things ever. Now, what I'm working on is trying to take that SD card yeah. and putting Dragon Quest on it. I mean, not Dragon Quest. Maybe it is. Yeah, it is Dragon Quest because I'm trying to have the nostalgia yeah. of playing that game. Yeah, just don't. You're not allowed to put Monster on Hunter on it now because they're garbage. Um, and another thing is you can download other uh, like software for it, like it's called Onion, I yeah. think, and it completely changes the theme and how it functions yep. and how the files are sorted. I haven't tried it yet. I have no clue, but uh, it's it's apparently it's pretty popular. I do have some negatives with this so far, though, that I have noticed. Okay. For me, the buttons are all, at least on this model, I wish they would have had them like textured a little bit, the front buttons. Okay. Right? And then I wish they would have colored them differently. Gotcha. Like, I know the theme is prison purple. Yeah. But I for the buttons, I wish they would have just done, like, a red or a... Have you seen the retro, the retro, like, um, that tannish gray that they had? Like, when the original Game Boy came yeah. out? They have that one that also had, like, buttons, like, a different color. But um, I'm with you on that. That's actually yeah, one of my Yeah, this one, if, if not change the color, just have the buttons textured slightly different. Just because when you're playing with this thing in the dark... You're, I mean, it's really just the first couple of days you're using it. You can't tell what you're hitting. It's yeah. just because it's all just smooth plastic. And you're like, well, I think this is A. It's <laughs> yeah. a guess. Yeah. But um, in that, like, I mean, it's 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 cool. Like, it's I have, I'm having a blast with it. And it's got a good weight to it, so it doesn't feel cheap. Well, it's like one of the things that I was like, when I was getting it, I was like, man, I can take this to work. And then on my break, I can, you know, crank out a level or two. Because what a lot of people, a lot of gamers do that but they are doing it on their phone yeah and so it's like i'm don't worry i am a subscriber to the mobile gaming community as well but not to the level i used to be or want to be but it's like again it's my purest heart that's like hey let's see what we can do let's actually do that and play to that level you know and (laughs) i don't have to worry about 30 cords for a super nes to plug into a tv and try to play you know, I can just pop it on, go to the act, uh, the game, boom, 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 go, and yeah. that's what I like about it. Yeah, and I get that, and but I don't. There is also just, and I say this word a lot, but there's just a magic in the older systems. Mm-hmm. They actually plug it in with the the three different AV cables, <laughs> that you, and you got the little dinosaur of a TV. Yeah, I don't know. There's some magic with that because. I was at when I was at FX Games last weekend getting some footage for the store. They had this original Xbox in working condition. It was it was like it was perfect. I don't think the previous owners ever took it out of the box, maybe, or they played with it in the box because there wasn't a scratch on the damn thing. Yeah. And I can't remember what the price was on it, but uh, they only had one. And of I was course. and I was like, I. There's no way, like, it's not going to be here. Because I, I knew I'd had to come back in a couple of days probably to get more footage because I, I, it's so shaky. I can't, like, I, I'm terrible at what I do as a YouTuber. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to have to come back. And I went back, no joke, two days later, someone bought it. What? Yeah, and it wasn't cheap. I don't remember the exact price, but it was not cheap. But I was, I was putting my pennies away to buy it. Yeah. Wow. And which, because, uh, you know, I have been looking locally for a while now. On for, a, like, some retro systems. On a good working condition original Xbox. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> it I, sh- I mean, I should have just bought it, but yeah. now I'm kicking myself, like, with, with the with the Pokemon cards. I kicked myself <laughs> by not keeping them. But, uh, and on top of that, they sold... Because I was eyeballing a Charizard GX. For some reason, I really liked the, because, you know, it's gray. Yeah. I really liked that hollow. I don't know why. 
but I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that and add it to my personal collection. I just really like the way the card looks for some yeah. reason. They sold that too. <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn. And, and you know, I've gone, you know, because I go over to Madness, two days, and then I always see them across the way. Yeah, and I'm like, man, what is keeping that place, you know, open? But now it's like, oh, that makes sense. Oh yeah, no, they're selling like for sure. And, and but I think the main part of their business is the console repairs because I kind of I'm not saying I went back behind the counter but I took me as a little peek yeah you know <laughs> and they had their whole back room was just filled with orders for in their PS5s and Xbox S's and stuff like that oh, just they're a repair or the like, ceiling yeah so I'm pretty sure most of their their meat and potatoes so to speak is the console repairs but I don't know because they're selling. All the stuff I wanted, yeah. So it's a good it's a good mix of business between retro and new age to keep new age up and going. Which I think you know, and that's a testament to like just talking about new systems and older systems. Yeah, like I think older systems was like get what you pay for kind of thing. Is is in meaning that like like they made sure your money went. You know, you had the red ring of death and other things and so on. But you would also have, like, I felt like it was few and far between. And now we have, like, we have PS5 controllers that are sold, like, with a known, like, I've looked in the forums. It's a known problem that their PS5 controllers, the the extra ones that you can buy from PlayStation, mm-hmm. have known stick drift. Like, it will happen at some point. And they still sell that product. So it's you spending 75 80 bucks, right, knowing that that product is going to break. Like, guaranteed. You got to keep that stick drift in check. <laughs> you never watched hockey? No. Big foul right there. <laughs> okay. At least I think it's called a foul. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know about sports, obviously. <laughs> I'm sorry to that mom, by the way. <laughs> Your son was probably crushed on his birthday. Uh, no, and I think another thing that keeps them in, like, in good business is because they're one of the few places, at least that I know of in Plano. Yeah. Uh, they do weekly Super Smash Brothers tournaments. Oh yeah, after that's, hours. Yeah, that's uh, gonna keep. Yeah, when they their shop closes at eight on the weekdays and weekends, uh, the official shop closes and then the tournament competitive uh, gameplay opens at eight p.m. and you can go in there, and I don't think it costs any money. You just go in and everybody from the community's there, and you just you play some Smash. That's wild. They they do another tournament game. I can't remember what it is though. Mm. Uh, but so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to keep them going for sure. It's having repeat locals coming in. Well, then you're like it's it's a advertising like two way advertising, right? It's like you're offering a service for free, allowing the community to come together, and they're having to walk through your store. They're seeing everything that you have for sale. They're seeing it's it's it goes back to the ads, and, and that's no fault to them. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, I think we need more of that, right? Like, when, or I don't know if you've seen it or if I've talked to you about it, but we went to Grapevine Mills Mall and we were walking around. And it, maybe it is Grapevine Mills, and I could be way wrong, but there's, um, what's cool is seeing these like cafes, like internet cafes of like these high end computers or systems that are for sale, you know, and are a thing. Yeah. And so with that, just coming by to do a check in. <laughs> She's gonna. Sure, um, all right. Yeah, but um, when these internet cafes, these high end computers, it's giving people access to things they hadn't had before. That's wild. Yeah. And so I like I like that part of it. I, n- I don't know if I ever told you, but I was always jealous about the internet cafes in Asia, <laughs> and just like because like I feel like those computers are like or like I get lost on YouTube watching people do the reviews on them. And then, like, where you can, like, order food from your computer. You never have to leave. What's uh, what's the big one we have out here in Dallas? Is it Nerdvana? Yes. Is that it? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been to one yet just because yeah. I'm, if I'm going to play a game, I'm going to go home. But I, I see the attraction. Like, the, if you don't have, like, a solid. So these systems, like, crush. Yeah. Crush. I mean, it's like, and again, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. Full, the YouTube video is full of. Like, every game you could ever think of, you could play online or LAN, right? And, That's cool. And some of the higher-end ones in Japan, 
or maybe in Japan, I should say Asia. I want to be respectful to them. Um, you can literally, like, there's a little side tab while you're playing that will open up, and it has their food menu, drinks, whatever, and they deliver it to your station. That is mind-boggling to me. I don't know Smart. why. Smart. Like, it's, what it is. it's a great business model, Yeah, I think. Like, obviously, for gamers and how it's becoming more attractive, like, um, League of Legends players in other countries are, like, seen as, like, legitimate professional athletes. They're making, like, million-dollar contracts. Like, Faker, it's a shout-out to Faker. He is one of the craziest mid laners that I've ever gotten to watch. And, like, I play a lot of League. I say that. I play a lot of League horribly. And then people, like, the community is a little rough. <laughs> really rough. That's what I've heard. Um, but he he. it's cool to watch him, and it's, like, I can see why they're seen as athletes and or whatever. Because, like, he will make a play, and I'm like, I've never thought to play that character that way. And he just did that. Now, obviously, are they putting in 60, 70, 80 hours a week, whatever, um, playing this game? Yes. But I think it develops that strategy. And sorry, I didn't. I know I cut you off. Um, I apologize. I think I remember what we were talking about. Now, um, well, just, just going back to what you were saying, how they probably play, like, 60 or 80 hours a week, that's my problem right now. I haven't played – like minus Metroid Fusion on the emulator, I haven't really played anything. Yeah, uh, with like the schedule lately, just with work and other, just trying to keep myself alive as a human. Yeah, you know, in a, in a decent shape at least. Yeah, like my heart doesn't hurt, so it's a good day. Yeah, in my head. <laughs> that has been my toughest uh, challenge lately is trying to find time between work and your your chores that you have to do at home and then scratching out a little bit of time to play a game. Yep. And then well also with like the content creation on YouTube. It's like where am I going to scrub out an hour or two to play something? Yeah. every day or at least a couple times a week. And then the other bigger challenge is what do I want to play? Yeah, because I've been looking at Starfield recently, and I was like, I want to play it, but I want to be able to sit down for more than an hour. Because yeah. what when I you first pick it up and you you get into Starfield, the out the first hour is just your character creation. Yeah, you might not even enter the world because I I easily could spend two hours in Oblivion, like just creating a making myself somewhat look human. Yeah, in that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now it's it's just that's the biggest challenge every week is do I have enough time to actually sit down and play something to where I can enjoy it, or am I just going to play something and then start getting the feel for it and then have to get off and go to bed and wake up go to work? Yeah, and it's you know and credit to that like I wish there was more games where you could like drag and drop, and like play, mm -hmm. and so or like drop into those games and be a part of them. Yeah, I mean, well, like, Steam is, like, nearly unlimited in your options, right, to play. But at the same time, you have so many options, you just don't know what yeah. to play. And, like, yes, you can go look at, a, like, a list, a top ten on Steam or whatever, most popular. You go to watch a YouTube video to go figure out what game you want to might want to play i don't know it's yeah. just, it's just weird but you know what i'm saying like you have so many options you don't know what's good like do i want to waste my hour trying something new or yeah. do i want to i wish play something i played a million times but yeah and my both of my dogs um were like checking out and like making sure the area was safe so i was making sure they were doing what they were supposed to i zoned out um, for a second to make sure they were doing the right things. And my point to it all of what I was meaning is that, like, I wish there was more games that when you drop into the game, it's an enriching experience for the times. Like, I wish I could set a time, like, hey, I have 30 in Steam. If you get this idea, shout out. I have 45 minutes, right? We put that as an indicator. I want an enriching experience that's fun, drop in, drop out, whatever it is. And I have this much time to play. Make that a category. Yeah. I guarantee you your sales will go through the roof. Like, your stock market will explode. I can see the category because middle-aged adult. <laughs> Living life the best they can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying. He's trying to game. Yeah. 
No, that that would be great. Something like that. Because if you're I, – I mean, I know there's games like League and Overwatch and Call of Duty where you can just jump in and start yeah. playing. I've never I've never really liked League. Uh, yeah. Overwatch or Call of Duty like that. So it's that's not I mean, that's not attractive to me. So yeah. that's that's what I'm saying. It's it's, like it's, it's hard a, to find a game it's that's It's a story experience. I want to be able to have a story experience that feels enriching, but I have X amount of time to be able to do that. And so it's like it's seeing that and like knowing that. And then, and again, we talk about like being like the common player and like and hopefully we represent you guys and like know like we both have, like, full-time jobs, and, like, we do this because, A, we're very passionate about it. It's something that's, like, important to our lives, but it's also, like, getting out there. And, like, I say, like, sharing your stories, but it's not sharing your stories. It's, like, we we argue, right? As the far common as like, struggle. Yeah, it's the common struggle. It's that, like, this is, like, it is important, but it's also important to have balance, and that's what we're figuring out. And in this journey, too, we're going, you know, through that whole process. And so it's... You know, it's just crazy to, like, try to, like, you know, every week we are like, oh, man, I really had this. But, you know, it's like, yeah, I only had this much time to do it. Or, like, I'm getting super busy with, you know, sports are about to start picking up. And so it's like I'm just trying to stay on top of it all and do all the things. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure you have a friend and you guys have a friend that that is always on top in the gaming world of, like, what's going on, or they spend all of their free time playing, and so whenever they hit you up, they're like, oh, have you played this? Have you played that? Like, yeah. I've been playing this. I'm like, dude, I have, like, zero clue what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, I've been putting gas in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just got home, and it's 8.30, and yeah. I'm about to cry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to turn on, because there's actually a lot of times where I, I get home, from work, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to play something today, going to do it, which is just playing a game. Like, it shouldn't be that hard. But yeah. I go and turn on my PC, and it gets loaded up, and then, uh, I, you know, I get into the home screen, I'm like, I don't feel like playing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I have 100%. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And or it's like, all right, I'm like, all right, I'm going to log on. I'm going to do X amount of things on the card shop, and then I'm going to, you know, play this game or whatever. By the time I'm through the card shop part, I'm like, "Yep, all right, I'm <laughs> I've had a good you know time of it, you know, and so I'm gonna go to bed or whatever." And that's usually at midnight because I'm really pushing my card shop. <laughs> yeah. So I I mean I'm not I'm not saying we're gonna gear the channel towards yeah, no. any direction. Like we're just, I mean I'm I'm gonna be playing games until you know my Grandpa fingers. Grandpa yeah. Tyler's in a wheelchair and he yeah. needs his third heart transplant. <laughs> That's yeah. always going to happen, yeah. but I think what more of the content you'll definitely be seeing is more of the real world, uh, like game shops, game uh, conventions, expos. Yep. Uh, what, what was another one we were talking about? Maybe like you know just oh, we were gonna we're also like in the summer like we want to try to hit up even some like bigger conventions or yeah and or like you know the hope or dream is like BlizzCon or something to that level, um, and just trying to like experience that. And do those things because, again, we do get time, you know. And and I didn't in any way mean that we were going to gear it in a certain way. Like, we're learning. Like, this is our creative process for Tyler and I. And, like, we're learning this process, um, you know. And this is probably a good place to, like, start to, I guess, wind down to let y'all know. But it's just, like, we appreciate and just follow the journey. Because I promise the content will get better. We get better with our recording. We get better with our... Um, <laughs> I say that uh, we get better with our techniques is better, you know, as far as like how we're producing and getting this, you know, this content out to you guys. So it's, it's yeah. exciting. It's like a process. This, this in itself to me is a game. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, I mean, you always have the option if you want to stay up to date on the newest and latest and greatest games, you have, you know, Asmongold, you have yeah. all these other creators that live it. Well, I think what we're trying to bring you is we're trying to bring back the old, you know, you can dust off that old Atari you haven't seen in 32 years at yeah. your closet and get yep. it going. But just some of the cooler, just fringe retro games. Yep. And then whenever we do have time, we'll talk about something that we've recently played. Yeah. Spend an hour on <laughs> like, oh, check this out. For sure. So um, with that, you know, uh, we appreciate you guys for tuning in this week. Um, 
we've talked everything from trading card games, which I will probably play until my fingers fall off again. Um, just talking about like things that bug us or quit stealing our emails, you know, shout out to a couple of companies that we won't give you another name drop. Niantic. I'll say it. <laughs> um, but we appreciate you guys and, um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Like, and subscribe, please leave a comment and we will do a Q and a every week. Give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one. But seriously, just one question from anybody and I'll answer it right now. Yes, please.